Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. Today we're gonna to talk about what makes a 3D printer tick. It's gonna be part one of our intro to 3D printing series. Um, what I have here is a brand new Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. I got this mainly to use for demonstration uh, on this channel and to print uh, more one-off little mini figures and things like that that I don't wanna tie up my main printer for. So let's go ahead and get started. First, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. It'll really help us out going forward. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll start with the bottom and kind of work our way up. We'll go over what each of the components are, kind of what it's for. Um, so obviously at the bottom here, we have our base frame, and then we have the control box. Um, we also have our display over here I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me scoot back a little bit here. We have our display. I'll go ahead and power it on so you can see it on the right. And then we also have our track for the X axis. Um, with, all right, some printers either have a little micro SD card like this guy or a standard SD card. And I've even seen a couple with just a USB stick. So it's really all over the board. Um, use what you need um, based on what the printer has. Uh, this is an 8 gig card, it's kind of excessive. Uh, most of the files you're going to be printing are a couple hundred meg, so you can really get away with anything. Alright, so also on this x-axis you have your drive belt, uh, just a reinforced rubber belt. You're going to see this in a couple places on the printer. It's connected to a step motor in the back. Uh, go ahead and turn this around a little bit. So you can see here, just the step motor. And then that controls the bed moving on the x-axis. Let me go ahead and turn off the steppers here so I can move things around. All right, let's go pair, disable steppers. Yeah, so that controls your print bed. And then Next, going up the line is you have the actual print bed itself or build plate. I'll go ahead and that is this guy underneath it. You've got a thermostat to track and monitor the temperature of that. And then you also have your heating element, which is actually what heats that up. And then you have your build surface, which would either be a magnetic guide like this, or you could have a glass and build plate like this, or even a mixture of both if you have the glass build plate and then you wanted to use a build surface like this guy you can put on either this base or on the glass build plate uh, it's really your choice uh, so let's go and put this guy back on uh, this is magnetic so it kind of sticks where you put it you might have to adjust it a little bit but it's really nice build surface I think it was a good upgrade on the Endor 3 Pro All right, next we have our um, hot end part of the extruder. Uh, this is what actually heats up the filament. It's got your heating block in there, as well as your tip. Uh, the tip itself on this, I believe, is a uh, four millimeter, sorry, 0.4 millimeter. Um, you can get different sizes and you can swap those out. You can also get different materials. Your standard one is going to be copper. That's great for materials like PLA and softer ones. If you start to get into more abrasive materials like your carbons, you're going to want to switch that out with more like a stainless steel type tip. Um, issue with stainless steel is it's not as conductive as the copper or brass, so you're going to have uh, potential issues keeping a consistent temperature or it might take longer to heat up. All right, so now we've got the actual Z-axis. Well, that's uh, support guys here. And then you got your X-axis bar that goes across. This is what the actual uh, hot end is on. Um, this will just move accordingly based on what your print is doing. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this. I'll turn it around here. Let me just unplug it real quick so I can show you. All right. So on this side of the printer, or the hot end, you've got 
the wheels. This is what actually keeps everything aligned on the track. You've got another one of those belts. I can kind of pull it down here so you can see it. Um, but that's what actually drives the belt, it's, or the ex extruder itself. Um, you got a tension unit over here, which you can use to uh, increase or decrease the tension based on what's needed. You want to make sure that it's tight so it doesn't have any give, but not too tight. All right. But the main reason I turn this around here is to show you these wheels. Uh, you've got the three wheels, two on top, one on the bottom. This keeps it in place and helps it move on the track. Um, I did have an issue where I had a chip in one of these wheels on a different printer and it caused some weird lines on the actual print itself. Uh, after troubleshooting, I ended up having to take most of the printer apart, but it was a chip on the inside of the wheel. So if you're starting to see any type of weird movements or anything like that on the print, uh, look into the wheel itself. All right, let's flip this over a little bit. I wanted to show you more of the bottom side now that I have the printer turned off. All right, so here's the underside of the printer. As you can see on the x-axis track, you've got the same wheels. Um, if you're having issues with movement, if the actual bed's moving back and forth a little bit too much or it's wobbly, you might have to uh, tighten these a little bit up. Uh, you can also have the same issue where if it's too tight or something gets in the track, you can damage the wheel. And if that happens, you're gonna want to replace it because you will see um, excessive movement and or uh, imperfections on the print itself, which can be quite annoying. Uh, you also have the wheels here to adjust the spring for the bed leveling. Um, I have this level, so I don't want to turn it right now, but basically you got the wheel, then there's a spring between this metal base and the bed itself. Adjusting the wheel will increase or decrease the tension on the spring and raise or lower the actual build at that, or the build surface at that spot. All right, and then also here we have the um, stoppers. You have these on all three of the axes. Uh, let me turn this a little bit so you can see it better. It's just a little button. When the actual build surface comes back and hits it, you hear engage, and then that's when the printer knows to stop. Um, the other two are going to be right here for the Z-axis, and Sorry, this is a new printer. I'm trying to figure out where all of it's at. Um, and right here, for your x-axis. All right. So turning this around a little bit. Again, sorry about all the movements. I'm just trying to give you guys the best view of all the parts that I'm talking about here. Uh, again, you got your stepper motors. Uh, this one is for the x-axis, this is for the z-axis. Um, here we have our drive. So there are two types of drives typically on your 3D printers. You've got your direct drive and a Bowden drive. This is the Bowden. Uh, the direct drive you would see sitting directly on top of the uh, hot end. And there's advantages and disadvantages of both. Um, with a direct drive, like I said, it's sitting on top of the hot end. It gives you more control, uh, quicker retractions, and everything like that. The main downside, or really the only downside with a direct drive, is it puts extra weight on this axis. So if you are if you don't have a good enough reinforcements, like this has a pretty solid uh, Z-axis supports. I've had some in the past that only have your 20 millimeter uh, supports all the way across, and then it, the extra weight causes excess vibrations, and then you have to try to reinforce the gantry so that you don't have that. Where with the Bowden drive, you've got the actual drive unit on the side here, and that just goes up and down um, on the same axis, but it's not directly attached to the head, so that weight is moved off. Uh, there are limitations with the Bowden drive. Uh, you typically don't want to use it for any of the more uh, abrasive or uh, specialty filaments like your carbons or anything like that. And 
The other major disadvantage is the retractions are going to be a lot slower, which on some prints could cause issues. Typically not a huge deal, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, so this one obviously has the Bowden drive. My Taz 6 has the direct drive, and then a couple other printers that I've had in the past has had the direct drive. This is the only one that I've had that actually has the Bowden, but they're pretty common. Um, I've got to readjust this, but that's fine. I'll do that later. All right, so this screw right here, or this long bolt, is what controls the movement on the Z-axis. Uh, the stepper motor here will turn this, which then turns the screw and then raises the axis itself. Going over to this side, we have our power supply. And then, like I said before, we have the display down here. Um, they could be set up like this where the power supply and the display are separate or you could have a separate control box that's off to the side that has both of them built in. Um, I personally like this setup better for a printer like this because it's more condensed. When you have that giant box to the side it's hard to maneuver or find a good place to put it. Um, or I guess if you're looking at a printer like the TAS6 it's got all of it just bundled together as part of the frame. It is a separate box, but it's part of the frame, so you don't have to move it around separately. Um, that one's been great as well. All right, and then you've got additional wheels on the side for your Z-axis. Um, same thing goes with these wheels as the rest of them. If you get any type of large debris in these tracks, you could damage the wheels and then if you start to see any type of large movements or anything on the print itself, um, you're going to want to check out the wheels first. <clears throat> it's a pain. It took me almost a week to troubleshoot my first time, so that's why I brought it up multiple times, just because it's it can be hidden. Um, the one case, I might have a picture of that wheel. If I do, I'll um, add it to the video. But in that one case with the wheel being damaged, um, it was at the bottom of the wheel, and you couldn't see it when you moved it on the axis. I didn't actually find it until I had half of the printer apart, uh, so that was an annoying one. <laughs> Alright, so then we've got the top of the printer and the little spool holder for the filament. If you get too much movement on the printer, you might want to move this off of the, film, or off of the actual gantry itself. Um, with the enforcements on here, I'm not seeing much movement when this is going, so I don't think it's an issue on this one. I haven't ran enough tests to say for sure, but I think it's okay. Um, one of my previous printers where it only had the, it was basically half the thickness, and it had the filament up at the top, that thing caused huge vibrations, which was just a nightmare. I had a print separate braces at for the top and bottom and put bolts in between them just to make it more rigid so I didn't have the issue. And then after that I ended up taking the filament off of it anyway and then put it in above. I had a storage box and it kind of just fed the filament down to it. So that worked great too because it controlled the moisture. Um, Alright, so that's the printer itself. That's kind of each of the components. Uh, I will be doing videos on how to change the filament here, and going over um, how to switch out the tips if that's something you're interested in. Um, also, a basic overview on how to take a file or 3D object that you get from a site like Thingiverse or any other equivalent sites, slice it and get it ready for print, and then actually put it on your SD card and then start your print. Um, all right, so let me power this guy back on. I want to show you guys a couple things with it on. And while I'm doing that, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. Like I said, it'll really help us out. All right. So some of the other common things you're going to know how to do is um, home the uh, home the actual print head. So if you just go to prepare, go down to auto home, that will zero everything back out. It's a good starting point for um, leveling the bed and then before you actually start a print, I tend to auto home it just so it's consistent. 
Um, the other thing you're going to want to know, or another thing you're going to want to know is how to disable the steppers. So under prepare, there's a disable steppers step. Um, what that does is it disengages the controls and the actual steppers so that you can move the actual components around on the axes. Um, like you can shift this around on the axis without having to worry about any issues. Same with the um, build surface here or the print bed. Uh, if you don't do that, you're risking burning out the actual controller in the stepper and then potentially having to replace it. I've seen it happen before. Uh, it's not a huge deal. I mean, the steppers are only like 15 bucks or something. It's just more of an annoyance to have to take everything apart, get it all put back together right, and then um, it's just a time commitment and then the extra money when you can just disable it and then be good. All right, um, another thing you might want to do is before you start a print, get everything preheated. So if you go to prepare again, you can go to preheat PLA or ABS, depending upon what you're printing. Uh, the difference is going to be what it's actually heating everything up to for the prep. So if you do preheat PLA and then you can either choose the hot end, the bed, or just the preheat PLA will do both. I like doing that because it gets everything at the right temperature before you start and then if you're doing any type of time-lapse videos or anything like that when you start it it's actually going to start printing versus having to wait several minutes to heat everything up all right so that was my overview of this 3d printer uh, i just wanted to go over all the components just to help uh, give you a baseline on how to move forward uh, make sure to check out some of my other videos if you're looking to change the filament or level the bed. Um, I have videos going over all of that. And if there's any videos you want me to create, just leave a comment below. I'll get them added to the backlog. Um, and make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. Like I said, it'll really help us with the YouTube algorithm and it'll help the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.